Garrett, you're old. I'm actually pretty young, Mac. Technologically speaking, you're ancient. Mac, did you get an upgrade? No. Yes, you did. Your face is different. It's nice and big and dull. Don't mention it. Oh, Mac, cheer up. You still have that hot tattoo on your hot bod. Garrett, when did you get my iMac body? Six years ago. Why am I in a Mac Pro body now? Because the iMac was old and starting to... Case in point. Ah, you got me, Mac. You're good. I've been here for more than 18 years, and you still love me. Well, that's because you're a timeless and beautiful game console, Nintendo 64. I also have no clue why all my technology can talk to me. Screw that. Play my games. Well, I thought I'd start up a new subseries on RTTTA called Did It Age Well, where I look at an old game and ultimately decide if it stood the test of time or if it lost its footing on the journey to now. This time around, I'm going to be playing Super Mario 64, which was known for laying the foundation for 3D platformers. But I also got to lay the foundation for a few rules here before I start. I am playing the original Nintendo 64 version on the Nintendo 64, the only way I believe the game should be played. If you're gonna argue for or against this game in the comments, be sure you've played the correct version, which would be the one for the Nintendo 64. If you've only played the Virtual Console port, I can establish right now that most of your points for or against the game will probably be wrong. I could get into it more, but I'm gonna leave it at that, and if you have any questions, then just ask me. Alright, <coughs> let's get it in there. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. It's true. So yeah, this is still fun. How is this fun? You're pulling on a face. This is fun, okay? You just have to try it for yourself. 3D was the shiz at this point, and I'm still entertained by this. But you know what has aged really well, even if this is a cheesy kid-friendly game? The voice acting. Heck, have you heard Mario recently? He's not doing as well as he used to be. <laughs> I guess you could say Mario's voice hasn't aged too well. Immersive gameplay is possibly the most key thing in a video game. Even some of the oldest games like Donkey Kong feel immersive. And that was 34 years ago. So what about this game? Yeah, honestly though, I still feel like I'm in that world with Mario. It's, it's like I'm there. It's like, I, it's like I'm there. It's, I, I feel like I'm just... It's like I'm there. The gas prices are really low. Holy cow. Obviously, the graphics are quite a bit below average, and here and there are a few models in the stage don't pop up till you're close enough. But honestly, that stuff doesn't take me out of the world because I don't think that's what necessarily makes a game immersive. I could get super into it here, but a couple small examples would be like birds fly away when you run near a tree, or swimming with tons of fish and watching them swim away when you swim near them are the things that make the world more immersive and more lively. And also added an AI system to it, so we have fish move out of the way when you get close to them. Do you expect me to be praising this controller? Listen, even if the Nintendo 64 is one of my favorite game consoles of all time, I cannot disagree that this controller's design has aged terribly. Talk about the game, not the controller. Son, you know I love you. That's why I have to discipline you. Shut up and play the game. Hey, listen, you're off the hook for now. The controls are a bit slippery, which despite my other annoyances with its GameCube sequel, Super Mario Sunshine, the slipperiness was something they improved on. The physics feeling somewhat like Mario running with soap bars under his shoes can be frustrating at points. It seems like there's only specific areas where this is clearly an issue, though. I mean, come on, it's not like we're dealing with... Oh. What's still aged nicely is the inviting and simple control scheme. It doesn't take too long to figure out how to do super cool jumps because it's super easy to figure out. They've improved on the reoccurring control since, but nevertheless, they still stand up fairly nicely to date. This is something Nintendo's always been good at. This is something Nintendo's always not been good at. They improved dramatically in Sunshine and Galaxy, but boy, do the swimming controls... Would you please... <laughs> Age. The camera for the most part was well designed. 
for 1996. 3D was still a new concept and platforming was taking a whole new shape. Unfortunately, it's aged. There definitely are moments when it feels like I'm a short kid trying to keep up with Mario, but constantly gets distracted and runs into walls. Um, excuse me. Hey, yeah, I just, I, I, I just want to see- Sunshine and Galaxy both improved on this by either having the camera get around objects in a far better manner, or a silhouette of Mario was shown so you knew where your character was when an object was in the way. What's kind of funny now is how they implemented the concept that Lakitu is the cameraman for the news station to report what Mario was up to as an explanation for the camera and the camera controls. This is likely because this new mechanic in the 3D world was still a totally new thing and having this simple subplot probably helped explain this new way of playing these games. As far as I know, this was never seen again. Age. <laughs> This is for the 64, so for some people, this is really hard to look at. This is back when you had 3D stop signs for heads. But if we were to compare this game to many others around the same time, the aesthetics are nice. It's still bright, colorful, and it contributes to, once again, the immersive gameplay. Again, though, this is a Nintendo 64, and so the graphics have aged pretty horribly. I thought you loved me, Garrett. The most love will be the most punished, and I just made that up in the script, and I'm pretty proud of myself right now. This is plummeting into the depths of script and hell so fast. Son, you need to learn some responsibility, because one day, you're gonna be living in this world all alone. You could possibly be the worst script writer of all time. <laughs> This hub world is still pretty great. It has also aged a little. Let's just make a couple comparisons between this game and a later game of the franchise, Super Mario Galaxy. 64 is hardly explanatory. It gives you the backstory at the beginning and you take it from there. There isn't a map or an overview. It just throws you into the game. In fact, really, it's self-explanatory. I mean, it's not like- Hey, Mario. He's come to the castle. Cross, so I guess I go over to that waterfall. No, that's not- <laughs> Even if you're explorational, it's obvious you head toward the castle to progress. Galaxy, on the other hand, is extremely explanatory. Everything is laid out to be as obvious as possible, and if it's not enough, then they have little overviews of the hub world in a few places so you know where every area is. So is this a sign of age in 64? Well, it's clear they were trying to be more helpful in Galaxy, but the concept of letting me figure it out for myself feels far less like mommy is taking us to the park. I know how to get there by myself, and going my own way may give me the chance of finding a dollar on the sidewalk. On the other hand, with another comparison, I can find some age in 64 hub world. While the exploration half and avoidance of too much hand-holding is a bonus for 64, things in the world are very disorganized, something that was largely improved on even in Sunshine. Honestly, lots of things just feel a little bit like a mess. Hey everyone, welcome to Super Mario 64. Let's have a look inside, okay? So, oh my god, it's kind of mess. You got turtle. Sunshine improved on this and Galaxy improved on Sunshine. Wait back at you, Galaxy, because guess what I got? Oh jeez, what? Secrets. Yeah, this is a big bonus on 64's behalf that I don't see his age at all, and I doubt anyone else would. Since the game already does little hand-holding, feeling the one to explore is stronger. And being explorative is rewarding, like finding that dollar bill because you went on your own route. And there are lots of secrets in this world. And I mean, even Sunshine had a lot of secrets. But Galaxy? Hardly. And implementing tons of secrets as rewards for exploring is something I will never see his age. Lastly, I realize 64 feels larger, at least as a hub world. And I think it's because of all the past points I mentioned. I don't mean to make this a comparison, though it may be, but it does feel larger. Which is a bonus in something that keeps it from feeling aged because a larger world is something that people still continue to strive for in an open world game or a hub world or the like. 64 probably feels larger even if it isn't because of its structure, it's very little hand holding, which gives players a lot of permission for exploration and the tons of secrets that reward the player's explorative intents. Too long didn't read, the hub world is a really cool 20 year old that can't keep his room organized. <laughs> yeah, so the first stage is a good start. Okay, there's some age. These moving platforms here are like a penguin in the desert. It's kind of out of place. This island in the sky? Yeah. But the redeeming quality is that it feels like you accomplished something by getting up there. It, I mean, kinda. But the great thing about this level is it's straightforward while also having some explorative qualities to it. But it's fairly simple while being interesting, and it's a great way of introducing the player to the game. The camera, again, though, can be the enemy, exposing the stage's privates by occasionally clipping through walls. Why? Are these random bubbles falling from the sky? Listen, I've been playing this game for as long as I can remember, and I still don't understand what the point of these are. Do they come from somewhere? Is there a backstory I didn't read? Is there, like, some... What is this? Surely Shagir did not, like, just go, go in and be like, like, yeah, it's fine. What if we just have... Meteorites would make more sense than this. So all, they all die. And that's how Yoshi did exist and didn't exist anymore. That's why it wasn't in the game.
No, wait, he was at the end of the game. I'm wrong. That set aside, my personal favorite stage in the game is Womp's Fortress. It really manages to have a lot of cool stuff going on in what truly is a fairly small stage. But honestly, it doesn't feel as condensed as it is because of all the neat things that you can do. And it's probably the most organized and well-designed level. This probably explains why it was the chosen stage of return in Super Mario Galaxy 2. One thing, though. The corner of these walls seems just a little lazy. Things like this pop up in other stages, too, which may be a sign that the developers were still figuring out how to make a natural flowing 3D world or something. But beyond this issue, Womp's Fortress, this is probably the best stage in the game. Unfortunately, some stages later on haven't stood that test of time as well. Lots of them feel like a mess, and again with that penguin in the desert thing. Some things just feel like random placement. Hazy Maze might be one of the worst with this messiness, and it's probably the most non-welcoming stage to me in the game. While some of the stages are fairly clear on where to go next, this one and some others are like Apple Maps. They kind of suck at showing you where to go. Open stake at an exceedingly massive level. <laughs> This sound quality is BS. Yeah, mix and production wise, it's age, no question. But what's more important is the core music itself. And this music never gets old. It's extremely memorable, and I bet anybody could start singing Slider and not even play the game in years. It's just that good. But this practically goes without saying when your composer is Koji Kondo, the freaking king of video game music. Hi Koji, I'm a fanboy. Please speak English so I can hug you. A small addition in game that I realize is the transitioning is nice and smooth too. When leaving an area, the music fades out with the visual transition. This makes a big difference in the long run when you've got... Some are great, some really suck. These drove me nuts when I was little and they still do. Now it's a good thing that they kept the concept consistent and it is fairly simple, but picking up Bowser by the tail and having to swing him around and then having to throw him at, at the bomby thingies correctly, ugh, it was just, it still irritates me. Now, so far I've been more of just critiquing the Bowser battles and giving my opinion, but has it aged poorly? Yeah, I think it has. Something about it just feels like a first draft cool idea simply because 3D was the new thing. Swinging around and throwing a character based on timing and depth perception is kind of like a look how cool 3D is thing to do. On the other hand, there are tons of other boss battles that I think are great. They keep it simple without ever making it too frustrating. <laughs> This is probably single-handedly the most important part of any video game. If it's not enjoyable, why play it? I mean, if you enjoy E.T. the game, then whatever, but you must also like smelling your dog's turds, so I mean, whatever floats your track, it's cool. So what about this game? Yes. Did, did you get did you get even just playing Babam Battlefield and Wops Fortress all the way through and I still absolutely love playing this game. The replayability is insanely good. I will admit there are some later stages that are kind of irritating and some that are a tad boring, and that's when I sometimes will decide to play something else. But honestly, for the most part, just like how I was when I was a kid, I have my eyes glued on the TV playing this game. I'm hooked. It's just extremely fun, and it's not just for nostalgia's sake. This game still holds up really well in a lot of areas. There are definitely parts as I've specified that have clearly aged, and I will not deny that at all. But the game is still ridiculously fun to play, and just playing this game to study its age got me stuck back on the TV for hours again. It just still holds up in that regard really well. So, ultimately, has Super Mario 64 aged well? Yes and no. Like I said, there are definitely things that didn't stand that test of time as well, but then other things that honestly I'm still finding better than a lot of the newer games in the franchise. Now, I don't make specific ratings for how much a game has aged. You determine that for yourself. But the game is still very playable and very enjoyable nearly 19 years later. I liked you when you didn't care about any of these critical things. When did you not? Son, don't make Make me take that game away from you. That game is a privilege. We're like practically the same age. You're on thin ice, son.